We think about injury. Most commonly, it indicates a mechanical injury. We have seen what happens in chemical injuries in our chemical injuries class. Today, let's look at the mechanical injury and its impact on our eye. So the mechanism, the main mechanism of the mechanical trauma is, see when you hit the eyeball from front, okay, that is when you're giving an anterior posterior compression to the eyeball, there will be an equatorial expansion of the eyeball. So now these are uh, a bit of, you know, long words, lengthy words with complicated understanding. Let's make it easy. Now, when I mean anterior posterior compression, now take a ball, take a rubber ball and compress it, place it between your two palms vertically and compress it uh, from front and back. You see that uh, along its diameter, that is horizontally, it will expand. See this, if this is your ball and you're compressing, you're applying force from front and back, you can understand that it will become something like this. Right? When you apply the force, this is this is your equatorial expansion. So this is the main mechanism of mechanical injury. And all the structures of the eye will be affected starting right from the orbit ending up to the retina. The orbit, the sclera, the cornea, the anterior chamber, the iris, the ciliary body, choroid, lens, vitreous and retina along with the optic nerve, everything is affected in mechanical trauma. Let's start off with the most common ocular traumatic condition which we come across in our ophthalmic OPD. This is this scary looking eye. This is the subconjunctival hemorrhage. And by saying that it's only scary looking, you can understand that though it looks so horrible, it's a benign condition. Benign and self-limiting. Right? Subconjunctival hemorrhage is a self-limiting condition and it will heal within two to three weeks on its own. The patient will be terrified to see his eye like this but your main management will just be reassurance because there won't be any pain and the vision will be absolutely normal. Within two to three weeks it is going to heal on its own. Okay. However, what you have to keep in mind is the hemorrhage might sometimes mask a conjunctival laceration. Here also, if the laceration is less than 1 cm, it will heal by itself. And sometimes it can even mask a more serious condition called scleral rupture. Okay. Now let's proceed to blowout fracture. So, the most common fracture of the orbit is the blowout fracture, most common fracture, right? And it involves the inferior wall. Now, we have to understand why is the inferior wall involved. Now, look at this image over here. The girl is trying to look up and this eye is not moving upwards. You can see that there is a trauma. So, clearly this is the injured eye and the girl is unable to look up because of entrapment of the muscle over here, right? Because there is a fracture to the inferior wall and there is an entrapment of the muscle which is not allowing it to move superiorly. Okay. Well, why is the inferior wall um, fractured most commonly? Because it is supported by a maxillary sinus which is a hollow structure. So a hollow structure can be easily broken. Right. So that is why it is the most common wall to be fractured and as I said there is an entrapment of the inferior rectus so the patient is not able to look up all right now the, although we know that medial wall is the thinnest wall but it is supported by ethmoidal sinus we know that ethmoidal sinus has a honeycomb structure it is a collection of multiple small sinuses right the ethmoidal sinus so this honeycomb like structure gives more strength compared to the hollowed out structure of the uh, maxillary sinus. So that is why inferior wall and not the medial wall is the most commonly fractured wall causing uh, inability to look up in the patient. Okay. Now there are three classical features of blowout fractures that you have to remember in your exam. It is diplopia, anophthalmus and anesthesia along the infra infraorbital nerve course, right? Along the course of the infraorbital nerve there is anesthesia that is the patient cannot feel anything along the cheek, teeth and gums. Okay. So diplopia number one and ophthalmus number two and 
Number three, anesthesia along the intraoral nerve course in the cheek, teeth, and gums is the uh, classical features of blowout fracture. Now, another interesting point over here is oculocardiac reflex. You really have to understand this clearly. What is oculocardiac reflex? It is decrease in heart rate as a consequence of applying direct pressure on the eyeballs. Now, let's try and understand a little bit about scleral rupture which we have spoken in subconjunctival hemorrhage it can sometimes be hidden underneath it so it is the most disastrous type of trauma and it occurs when the eye is hit by a large object right it is a counter coup injury and you have to really understand what is the meaning of counter coup when you apply pressure at one set see let's assume this is the eyeball you're applying pressure at this place the impact occurs at this place that is opposite to the site of application of pressure. That is the meaning of countercoup injury and scleral rupture is one of such kind. Okay. After the rupture occurs, there is tissue extrusion. Whatever the tissue is present, it will extrude through the uh, ruptured sclera. There is an interesting test called the Seidel's test. It is used to differentiate between tears and aqueous drainage due to scleral rupture. Whenever the sclera ruptures, the aqueous from the anterior chamber comes out. See, if there is a, this, let's assume this is your cornea with the anterior chamber and aqueous humor. If there is a rupture over here, the aqueous humor will start flowing out like this. So the patient will tell you that there are a lot of tears flowing out of my eye. You'll have to differentiate whether they're actually tears or aqueous humor actually coming out from a ruptured scleral site. For that, you will do this test called the Seidel's test. So you will stain the cornea and with sodium fluorescein stain and observe for the staining under a cobalt blue filter. What happens is if it is aqueous humor, if it is aqueous humor, it will get stained and you can see the clear pathway of flow of aqueous humor out of the scleral rupture very clearly it's flowing like a waterfall or a river out of the mm, scleral rupture this is how you'll differentiate between aqueous humor and the tears okay and let's come to another condition i'm sure you all have heard about this word hyphema now by definition hyphema is blood in anterior chamber see this picture there's blood all over here in the anterior chamber this is what is called hyphema and as you can deduce it will cause an increase in intraocular pressure and there are certain grades of hyphema grade 0 is micro hyphema grade 1 blood fills up one third of anterior chamber grade 2 one third to half up to here that is grade 2 half of anterior chamber is filled with blood grade 3 greater than half is filled with blood Grade 4 is a total hyphema. The entire anterior chamber is filled with blood and is completely red in color. Okay. Now, the black ball is also called B ball hyphema. It's completely black in color. When the blood is black in color, you call it a black ball or B ball hyphema. Okay. Look at this black ball hyphema. You see the cornea is looking so black. The anterior chamber is completely black in color. It indicates a compromise in the circulation and lack of oxygen and these patients have a higher chance of developing glaucoma. Now how will you manage it? First you have to irrigate the anterior chamber and observe. Then you have to go for a surgical management. The indication is if the intraocular pressure is greater than 50 millimeters of mercury for more than 5 days then you will have to consider surgical management. Now, the complication of this condition, however, is re-bleeding. And the most common time that it occurs within 2 to 5 days of the initial hyphema, and it is also associated with an increase in the intraocular pressure. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MedicoApp. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.